Today we're talking about uh, suggesting depth in our painting without relying too much on the photograph. The photograph is a place to start, gives us an idea of how far back we want uh, objects to go, but we need to rely more on what we know about mixing color to suggest depth. Thinking in terms of objects getting cooler as they go back, warmer as they come forward, but if we rely on the photograph and just mix until we match, we'll lose our sense of depth. So it's a good practice in that we're developing our own sense of color, learning what the colors do together, and also uh, creates more of a painting rather than just a copy of a photograph. Now in this uh, lesson, I want to um, talk about using colors that suggest depth or distance in the painting. Photographic color, unless it's messed with in Photoshop, really does not show depth very well at all. And this is in the Bighorn Mountains in Wyoming. Cloudy day. I could put a little strip of sunlight back in there if I wanted to. These yellow greens back in here are just the same intensity as up here. So there's no depth in there at all. I like the photograph. You know, the photograph looks realistic because we always think it's a photograph has to be real, but it really isn't. It really has way too much saturated color in the background. Even here where this looks pretty bluish green, I want to push it more to really shoot that back in the distance. And then as I move forward and I would take it in layers, the idea that, uh, you know, this would be one layer of greens, this kind of hillside here would be another than the dark trees. And then this could be a layer in there. So I'm gradually coming forward to create more, more warmth. So I got a lot bluer, maybe a hair lighter in the background, uh, but definitely more on the blue side, less on the green side. That's a bit on, that's a bit green in between blue, green, and yellow green. So I went more blue, lighter blue, green with the grass on the hillside instead of all that yellow. There's a lot of strong yellow in there that really kills the sense of depth. So I don't get the yellow in there that I see in the photograph till I get about up in here. So I'm really tempering any yellow from here to about here. Then I start adding more yellow. But if I can think in those terms instead of just copying the photograph, it works a lot better. Even the shadows have a bit more yellow in them. This has more yellow in it than that. So, it's a, you know, they're both kind of shadow, but a little bit warmer shadow as I come forward. So even the shadows get warmer as you come forward. They're still cool compared to the lights on a sunlit day, not so much on a cloudy day, but uh, more yellow. And then up front, I get yellow, yellow oranges. I can get reds, even some red violet once I get all this foreground warm enough. But I want that strong separation from the front all the way to the back. And then in between, I got a series of gradually getting warmer greens. And these are all summer so far. And, but I could, you know, I could make these more yellow. I could add a hint of fall without any problem. Again, it's more painting what you know instead of what you see. And if I wanted to change the color, as long as the value reads right, I can make the color pretty much anything. So again, warmer everywhere, way too warm in the background, and just cooling it off. What helps me is I have no um, inclination to make it look like the photograph. And for a long time I did when I started using photographs. And that was a hard thing to do because you want to paint what you see and to kind of paint what you know thinks a bit, th takes a bit more thinking or a little bit harder work at first. But after a while you start thinking in terms of the colors on your palette. And that's what I want to do here. Go from background cooler, foreground warmer. But photograph, everything's warm. Cool off that background. And that negative painting of using this blue in the background to cut into these warmer trees really creates a lot of depth. Not as much here. A lot more there because I pushed the bluer background. And this one, uh, comp again, everything you want to think compositionally first. And I'm going to crop this one more into a vertical because I like the stuff in the foreground right here as it leads to the building and then the mountains and then the sky. I don't, you know, I'm not as enamored sideways. It's from the sky down to the front because I like that big foreground in there with all the flowers and the changes of color. So this has a sense of depth in that the hills back in here are cooler 
but there's way too much orange in there. It just doesn't go back far enough. It's kind of the same warmth there as I see in here, maybe a few, few places in there, and that just flattens everything out. So there's a sense of things being a bit bluer in the background, but I want to push it. Same thing with these trees right here. They're kind of a, a slightly warm gray, so they're not real warm like these. These have more yellow in them, but they're too gray, too nondescript to just copy. They don't have a, a cool feel to them as far as depth. There's not a lot of sunlight in this. There's some sun, but and I can push that. I can get these shadows darker and cooler, and I can get the light area a lot warmer. So I could do that a bit more in places. So the changes I've made here, Again, starting in the background, and this kind of wild color, but I push this as blue as I can without being, you know, there's some orange in this blue, ultramarine blue, a little white, maybe a touch of orange or cad red, and no detail back in there. I can get a little bit more detail here, but I push that a lot bluer. Again, in the photograph, it's just kind of a gray. I don't mind that kind of reddish gray-green look in those trees. But I just want to push it back. I got a violet tree here. It stays back. So I'm strictly thinking what I know as opposed to what I see in the photograph. The photograph gives me a shape, gives me a sense of what the light's doing. But color-wise, I want to push it. Then as I come forward, these greens start to get more yellow in them. And then in front here, the yellow really takes over. Just enough blue to get some green somewhere, but more yellows, oranges, reds. You know, I could add violets to gray the yellows a little bit because I don't want straight yellow. So I am adding cool color to these, but only to gray them slightly, not enough to cool them down. Again, that's the thinking. Now I can come back, I can add a little bit of lighter, slightly lighter, warmer things in here. I could break up the background. I could pull it forward slightly by adding a little bit of warmth, or I could leave it blue. Just make it stay back there. You don't have to mess with the background. The only thing the background for is to make the foreground come forward. In other words, this goes back because it's so blue, and it makes this stuff look warmer, so it comes forward more. Keep the background simple. Do some colors where you really push the background maybe more than you think you should, because it's always easy to pull it forward with a little bit of warmth. But don't copy the photograph. Kind of think through what you want to show and use colors that suggest depth and bring things forward. I do have to do this here. This is just way too much there. One thing you can think about doing also is by like that foreground, if I lay it in and it is way too warm or way too intense, although I, I kind of like that. I don't mind doing that sometimes. I can get a blue violet, a blue with a little bit of alizarin or deoxazine purple. Really thin it down with some medium. Wipe most of it off the brush. And again, this is a cooler color. And I might thin it down even more. Wipe more of it off my brush. Add a little more, bit more medium. And just a thin glaze of a violet. Um, I would use ultramarine blue and um, alizarin crimson because they're both transparent. So I could add a lot of medium to it, really thin it down. Wipe most of it off the brush. And I could cool that down. Now, all that does is keep it from being so strong. It's still real warm. So that was before I added the glaze. And that's what it's called, just a glaze of medium and transparent cool color. Alizarin and ultramarine blue, especially French ultramarine blue, are transparent. And you can see what that does. It just tones it down. It also harmonizes it a bit. And when you first do it, you know, you overdo it or you don't do it enough and it becomes frustrating. But you try it a few times and it kind of helps. I don't do it much at all, but once in a while when I have a foreground like that, that, all I have to do is glaze it over. A lot of times I'll take a soft rag afterwards and just wipe it. And that stain will just stay there and just knock it down, just like it did on the computer screen here. There it is uh, without the glaze. And I don't know that I don't like it better uh, without the glaze. I don't mind the strong color. It helps to push things once in a while to see how, how they look. Now a couple of paintings. Uh, this is a painting by John Folensby. He was a student of John Carlson, early 20th century. And you can see uh, his brushwork here is very impressionistic, just small dots. A very pure color. He doesn't use any uh, earth color. No ochres, burnt sienas, or umbers or anything. So his color is very clean. And in the background, the sky, the water, just blues. Blues, blue violets, blue greens. And he's not painting what he sees, per se, but he's 
looking at what he sees and using colors that best describes distance there. It also uses colors to best to describe sunlight and shadow. This is another one by um, Edgar Payne. And again, pushing that background, real blue back in there. And the further back he goes, the bluer it gets. There's a hint of maybe yellow in this blue here, but not much. You can really see the difference between here and here. And that creates that depth. When you get that contrast of dark, warmer green against lighter and cooler, just instant depth, especially back in here. There's yellow in here because we're looking through the sunlight. The sun is kind of in front of the viewer overhead, and you're kind of looking through the haze of sunlight. So it does warm it up some. You especially see it in the sky. Very yellow. Still very blue back in here, very simple. And the shadow here is warmer than back here. But the shadow up front is still cooler than the light areas. These light areas are very warm. As long as the shadow is cooler than the sunlit areas, I can make it a bit warmer in front so that it's a lot warmer than the background shadow. So it's all about comparison and what you're trying to show. Make something go forward, come back. But the least thing it is, is copying the photograph. I got a couple here by John Carlson. You can see his background here. Just simple blue. In this case, it's a blue-violet, a little bit of a blue-green in the background. Very simple background. All his busy work is up front. And just a simple, in this case, a little darker, cooler shape to stay in the distance. And the simpler you keep it, the more it stays back. This is another one by John Carlson. And again, you can see the background is just a blue. A lot of blue in here because of the shadows. But the shadows up front are a lot warmer. There's oranges ochres, reds in them. Back in here, they're not. And that's what makes that go back. And these blues come forward. And then in the middle here is the warmer sunlight. Very nice, nice suggestion of light and, and distance. Same thing with this one. You can see the background. The background's busier. It doesn't go back as far. This painting's a little, uh, image is a little small. I can't blow it up very big, but this one I can. You can see the background here, very simple, almost kind of flat. There's not much depth to it, but it does make the foreground trees here really stand out with all their busyness in the foliage. So if he would have had busyness in the background and all this busyness in the trunks and the dead foliage, it'd really be a mess. But simplifying, really getting that blue makes all this stuff come forward. Think about those colors that you need to use to make things go back. Sometimes gradually, there's a lot of middle ground. And in this case, there's no middle ground. It's just instant distance back there with the blue.